times. Hey guys, welcome back to the range. Um, I'm, I'm at 10 yards, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm at 10 yards. Um, I basically, actually, come here. Uh, I'm, I'm at 10 yards and I'm basically just working old school snaps. Uh, just uh, practicing swinging the lollipop. Honestly, I think I'm actually slightly under on the time, meaning that I need to have more time on the clock. And I believe I'm actually uh, three yards further out than I should be doing this because I believe this standard is like one two five from seven yards and I'm doing it in one flat from ten yards So I don't know maybe the targets even smaller um, What I'm doing right now is I am preparing for a um, For a class that I'm getting ready to go to This coming Sunday guys. I'm so excited about this this coming Sunday. I'm leaving for uh, Dayton, Ohio I'm gonna be doing a five-day class with Dave Spaulding his uh, legacy class. Basically, it's one of the two last classes that he's doing in 2022. And then, so it's five days with him. And then I go and I do uh, Covert Pistol with uh, Shane Kerwin um, up in Clarksville, Tennessee. So I'm going to have seven days straight of shooting. What I wanted to briefly cover in this video, and better put my hearing pro back in again. What I wanted to cover in this video is mitigating recoil on your handgun. You guys have seen this handgun many times before. Um, this is a Glock 17 Gen 3 that I machined, uh, that I did a lot of work on myself um, years ago, and I love this gun. It just, we have a lot of mileage together. And if you look right here, I took, the initial angle is like that, and then I flattened it out. And what I did was, I took and I dremeled basically a shelf for my thumb to rest on. My support hand thumb rest on this shelf. And what it does is, it gives you the ability to take a shot without the front of the gun doing this and your thumb sliding off because this area normally is just you know smooth and flat. And sure, you can shelf on it, but then the, then the gun constantly is doing this out of your grasp. It's always wanting to come out of your grasp. And that little shelf, known as a gas pedal cut, is the magic to all of this. The other thing is um, leaning into the gun. You wouldn't think that leaning into a handgun matters as much as it matters with a rifle, but it really does matter with a handgun. Getting into that gun, not allowing the gun to push you around, really does matter in your recoil. Those two things alone make a huge difference in how you control your handgun. The running joke, of course, for generations has been gun control means using both hands. Um, which I forget the first time I saw it, but I loved it. Um, I am a big proponent in having a large handgun. Whether you have big, whether you have big hands or not, is irrelevant. Shoot the biggest gun that you can get away with shooting and carrying. And if you do, you will never regret it. Because if you actually find yourself in a position where you do have to use your sidearm for self-defense, you're going to be happy that you have enough gun to hang on to and enough gun to have a fair amount of extra rounds that you can carry in the gun. Even if you don't have to do attack reload, if you even find yourself in a position where you even have a moment, let's go ahead and put that 21 rounder in that gun. And now I got a whole lot of behavior modification in this gun. So I am, a, well, I was actually on my last round. I'm a big, big proponent in having a big handgun, and I'm a big proponent in modifying that handgun and treating it like a tool. If you modify this handgun to fit your needs, to fit your hand, it will serve you and it will serve you well. Think about it. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. As always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those guns out in practice. Have a good one.